Welcome guys to the new YouTube video and in this video we will be building a 12x RX 580 8GB Sapphire rig. As you can see I have all the components ready in here. We have 12 cards over here. All of them are the same Sapphire brand, 8GB, all 12 of them. Uh, for the power supplies we have one Corsair RM850X, uh, that's a modular PSU. That will be enough to power six of these cards. And then we have the HP server PCU, which comes with 12 PCIe slots from the breakout board. That's the cables. If we need, we have some extensions like this one to power, let's say, two risers from Wayne Lane. And then we have the motherboard. It's Ashrock H110 Pro BTC Plus. It has 13 PCIe slots, as I remember. That's Wi-Fi adapter in here for the meantime. That's 8 gigabytes of RAM and I don't even know which processor it is because I bought it second hand. This is the frame that we will be using. That's a homemade two layers mining frame for 12 GPUs that should fit six one slot and six on the second floor. Motherboard will go here, one PC will there and the server PC will go upstairs and power up the upper layer of the cards and also maybe one card from the bottom. We'll see how it goes. So I'm starting by placing the motherboard somewhere around the middle. All the output connectors going that way, the same way that cards, HDMI and other display ports will go. And the back will be for the cables to go out to the power socket and stuff like that. So, motherboard is here. We can start by putting all the cards in here, connecting them there. And I think the last part will be just to give all everything the power. So that's just the way I like to start building all the rigs. So let's start by placing all 12 GPUs, six here. Here. All right, so we have our GPUs in place. They're a bit dusty since it's obviously used GPUs. I figured out I put more GPUs in the bottom section because I had the holes for that and I keep this free slot for the PCU so I wouldn't need to put it on top just for aesthetics. And since these cars aren't RTXs, uh, I think these gaps should be fine for the airflow. Maybe I'll put some fans in the front if they need to. But for Sapphire and RX 580, it should be fine. So one PCU down here, one PCU up here, and it should be good to go. finished wiring up the first PCU cables for power to the GPUs. As you can see one main powers up two GPUs, again two GPUs, two GPUs and the cable management is pretty tight so I had to use one six pin. It goes into the riser over there and then the second part goes into the riser and the top. Uh, it's pretty hard to get in but we got it in. Also, I forgot to mention the version of the risers. I'm using 008S risers for this build. Also, I got them used, but they're all working, so I'll just reuse them. Since this is a budget build, trying to make it as cheap as possible and to get as much as hash power as possible. So I think that's a pretty good example for most of the guys mining and trying to build their first rigs. So that's mainly the reason I'm doing this video. So enough talking. Uh, this is the first G uh, PCU in place. Now I have to insert the second one that will go over here and power up these four, no, these three and these four, oh, these three. Okay, so I have six GPUs left unpowered, so the final PCU will power them all. And then I have to figure out something for this because I don't have any SATA cables and all of my lanes on the PCU is already used up. So I think I'll have to switch to USB later on. At 
this point, all the cards are connected. I still need to cable manage all of this. Everything seems to be connected. All the risers are powered. Now I need to put the risers into the motherboard for this PCU cards and then clean everything up and we should be good to go for the first run of the rig. Well, cable management is definitely better, not perfect, but considering I only use like one, two, three, four zip ties, it's, I'd say it's perfect for the amount of effort used. Yeah, everything's clean, still have one slot available. Here everything is hidden under the frame, and now we can plug everything up and see if it goes. Also, I place the power button and put it over here. Let's sit on the corner right next to the GPU outputs. I think it's a convenient way. So let's plug everything in and see how it goes. This is connected. This is connected. It already starts to spin the fan once it gets the power, even though the breakout board is not on yet. So let's turn this on first. Yeah, free here and free over here. All lighting. That's great. And then let's press the power button and all of them should start. Hashtag first try. Nice, looks like every single card is spinning. Now I just need to connect it to the SSD, turn on the hype and see what hash rate do we get from the 12 cards that we have over here. Here, uh, it's a bit buggy. As you can see, the graph isn't showing, but I let it run for a couple of days and it's running stable at these overclock settings. If you need them, here you go. Feel free to use them. That's the mem tweak at 30, uh, two to 50 memory clock, 1000 memory voltage, 930 core voltage, core state at 3, and core clock at 1250. And I also use aggressive undervolting just to decrease power consumption on these cards, since this Polaris cards actually pull more than Hive shows. Uh, as you can see on the system, it shows around 98 watts per card, and in reality, you can expect something like 120 to 130 watts per card. Better to use a wall socket to measure all these numbers and just find the best OC settings for you. SK Hynix or Micron Memory also have some Samsung memory cards that I don't have good settings for them. I'm only getting around 31 mega hash. So if you have any better settings for those, please drop them in the comment section down below so we could all use the same settings and increase our hash rates for free. These cards are going pretty cheap right now considering the market you can find them for around 300 euros where i'm at uh, you can find them for like 250 to 300 on ebay not sure if those are on amazon but i wouldn't suggest buying new cards better go for second hand since those are going cheap as panic sellers are releasing those farms into the market so grab your deals, wait for them, and don't overpay for cards at this moment. It's running stable. As you can see, I'm getting free 96 mega hashes for 12 cards. And it's pretty good considering what I paid. Even with the current market, if Ethereum goes proof of stake, I think I will be like 70% in my ROI and then I can sell the cards for the remaining part and still make some profit or I can just continue on mining Ethereum Classic on these cards or any other second best option that will come up after proof of stake. That pretty much concludes the video. Thank you for watching. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button since I will be uploading much more content at the time so stay tuned for that and see you guys in the next one